Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to ask your forgiveness if my voice rises. It's intentional. It is deliberate in an effort. Maybe this voice will reach 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue even now. My offer to Donald Trump to read the Constitution remain standing. <laughs> remain standing. One more time, he has proven that he is unfamiliar with the basic tenets of our democracy, our values. I am grateful. I am grateful to this wonderful event, very timely event. I'll share with you my observation. This is my 112th event since the Democratic National Convention. I have continued to speak to various communities. I will share what I have observed since election where our veterans stand, where our concerned communities stand, where those who voted for Donald Trump, I have stood in front of them and I have spoken to them and I have heard from them. I'll share that blessed event where they shared their concerns and their regrets. But let me first share a concern. Thomas Jefferson, long ago, wrote, the greatest danger to American liberties, the greatest danger to American liberties is the government which ignores the Constitution. You connect the dots. Within these 120 or so days, we have seen violation of violation after violation of our basic tenets of our Constitution, our democracy. Democracy is nothing I stand in front of learned audience, all patriots concerned about the well-being of this nation, well-being of my nation, my country. But I must state this, democracy is nothing but tyranny of majority. It's rule of law that makes sense in the system of democracy. And you have seen within these 120 or so days so many violations of rule of law. Our system of government, our system of government where we cherish separation of powers have been maligned time after time. I heard the word resistance. You will hear from my hero, my favorite governor of Virginia shortly, but I must share with you and let me reintroduce myself to you. My name is Kizer Khan. I come from Charlottesville, Virginia. Charlottesville, Virginia was declared several months ago by our courageous mayor, Mike Signer, to be the capital of resistance of United States. We saw, he saw then, and along with we saw then, that there is only one solution to such violation of our democratic values, of our constitutional values, of our Bill of Rights, of our separation of power, is resistance. I have traveled throughout the country. I have stood before our veterans. They have asked me this question, Mr. Khan, 
We were promised we will be looked after. Mr. Khan, we have given all that we had to this country. We hear that not a single dollar was allocated to Legal Services Corporation that served us. Where would we go? Where would we go to seek legal help? In the same audience, they identified themselves that we have voted for Donald Trump. We ask you, Mr. Khan, can you tell us what to do? Two of the elderly persons stood up in that audience, stretching their arm. Their dialysis tubes were still in their arm. Mr. Khan, prior to Affordable Care Act, we used to eat less so we could pay the premium for our pre-existing condition. Since Affordable Care Act, our premiums were reasonable. We could afford to eat properly. We are concerned. Can you assure us, can you show us, can you tell us what to do so that we will not face what we faced prior to Affordable Care Act? My suggestion to them was one thing that I share with you and I share with the entire nation, wherever I have gone, is that in democracy, when you find that your government is not serving your concerns, the only solution you have is resistance. Stand up, speak louder, call your senators, call your congressmen, tell them that if you do not speak on our behalf, if you do not address our concerns, we will never vote for you, we will never stand with you, we will never contribute a penny. And you are watching, you are watching these town halls and the result of town hall meetings throughout the country. People are realizing the power of their voice, the power of resistance, it is that that we need to continue to harness the energy, the concerns, the devotion of this nation. I share with you something. Uh, I recently traveled to Europe at the invitation to participate in a debate. The result of French elections is victory for hope and unity. It's a defeat for fear and division. Let me, let me put it in the context. Last century's first 50 years saw two world wars, atrocities against mankind, division, and the script was nationalism, economic interest, fear of immigrant. Those who divide us are so dumb, they continue to carry that script, First World War, Second World War, even today. But Europe has realized it. The result of French election is a testament that the world sees progress, prosperity in unity, because they fully realize that last 50 years versus first 50 years, last 50 years saw European Union come together, nations come together. Last 50 years saw United Nations was built. Last 50 years saw NATO was built to maintain peace. Of course, there had been difficulties, but altogether, the world is realizing that in unity is prosperity, not in division. The division was, it saw two world wars. So the world is realizing. And the reason I mention this, why it is critical, why it is important for us to keep an eye outside of United States as well. We were hoping that 
after the election there would be some deliberate steps to unite us, but that hasn't happened. To bring the nation together, that hasn't happened. What has been taking place, further division is taking place. Minorities, other communities, different faiths are being maligned and subjected to hate and division. That is un-American. That is against our interests, that is against our prosperity, that is against our Bill of Rights. The rest of the world aspires to have the blessings that we have which are enshrined in our Bill of Rights, in our Constitution. Even today, even today, regardless of all the difficulties that we are having within our country, rest of the world still is interested in learning about our institutions, learning about rule of law. I have stood before the audience of various countries. They have asked this question, can you tell us what this rule of law is? Our people wish to know. We had television crews from various parts of the world come to our home asking that question, what is this Bill of Rights that, and this Constitution that you waved at Donald Trump? Can you explain this to us? Can you show us what 14th Amendment is, what equal protection is? My question to them was, are you asking this question to make your conversation, your, in, your interview interesting, or you have been asked to ask this question? And unanimously, they all said, our audience want to know, what is this separation of power, equal dignities, equal protection of law that this person continues to talk about so passionately? I find myself uh, so humbled that I was warned not to stand up, not to be so public about my passion. We were humble, modest, grateful citizen of this country, grateful citizen of Virginia. When the bigoted, most bigoted statement was made by Donald Trump, I will ban all Muslims, all Hispanics will be thrown out. Women deserve no equal dignity and respect. Judges are partial. Small children of our friends, whenever I would go to visit with them, or when they, were, they would come our home to visit, small children, elementary school children, middle school children would come to me and would ask this question, could you please tell us, can we be thrown out of there? But we were born here. Parents would say they don't eat well. They don't do their homework with interest. When we ask them, they simply say, we are so afraid. But we are citizens. We are citizens of this country. These children were born. That was the impact of the bigoted statement on small children when the invitation came that a tribute will be paid to Captain Himayun Khan and we would appear. We thought for two days, second day when we were, had promised that we will respond positively or negatively, I went to check the mail and there was a small white envelope without a stamp in our mailbox. I saw that it was addressed to us. When I collected the mail, I opened it and I read it. It was written, there were four signatures, four names. Of course, parents had something to do with it. But four elementary school children wrote that small card to us. This is what it said. It said, Mr. and Mrs. Khan, can you please make sure that Sophia is not thrown out of this country? We love her very much. She's our friend. Please make sure. I brought that small card to Ghazala and I said to her, maybe this is the message. We must stand up for these children. We must speak on behalf of these concerned children. And we did. And the rest, you have seen how we were maligned, but it has encouraged us because we are grateful citizens. We have been bestowed all the dignities that rest of the world aspires to have. 
by becoming citizen of this country. We are so honored that this is the least we can do, that we continue to speak for our values, we continue to speak for these dignities. I do not call them amendments to the Constitution or Bill of Rights. I call them human dignities. Rest of the world aspires to have those in their life. In this person's simple mind, the world is divided in two sections. One, authoritarian regimes. They dictate what ordinary citizen will have, will not have. On the other hand, we are the blessed group, blessed nations that have democracy where we choose who will govern us, what laws will be enacted. We do make mistakes, like last election. We have made a mistake. We will correct it. We will correct it. We are correcting it. Maybe this is an opportunity for all patriots to come together, all patriots to join hands. People ask me, what do you advise under the current circumstances? This is my humble suggestion to all of us. You have heard from our wonderful leaders. You will hear from my hero in a few minutes, the governor of Virginia. I wish my attorney general of Virginia was here as well. These two heroes, when their state, the citizens of their state were under stress after the Trump's Muslim ban, they went straight to the airport to stand in solidarity, stand in solidarity with the community. We love them, we appreciate them. In them we see the solution to this tyranny of majority by standing firm, by standing tall, by standing with community. And this is my humble suggestion in conclusion that under this, these circumstances, all of us, all of us patriots need to remain standing in unity, support one another, continue to speak, speak louder. If this humble, ordinary, barely educated person can continue to speak, I am sure I am standing in front of most learned people today. Continue to speak, support those candidates, support those office holders that fully understand your democracy, our democracy, our values. And make sure that during this, hopefully this is a brief, brief moment in the history. I assure you, if you remain standing, remain firm, remain united, support those by your voice, by your efforts, by your contributions, those who stand for the values of this country, for the values that are enshrined in Bill of Rights, in the Constitution. Your name and name of organization like this will be written in the history with golden letters. I am so humbled, I am so grateful for this opportunity to stand before you. Thank you very much.